what if we did another video today? What if it was a what if video? Holy what ifs, Batman. We're doing a what if video today in the Model 3. Buckle up. As usual, I got a whole list of uh, things here. Let me show you. Can you read them? I got a whole list of stuff to do. Uh, a lot of them are going to be parked, so I'm going to go to this uh, park up here and do a bunch of the videos there, and then some of them are going to be while driving. I'll break them up like that. Let's bust these out. What if I mixed them up a little bit? I could do that. I do edit these videos. I could do that. All right, the first one here. What happens if you put your foot on the gas and the brake at the same time? Well, you can see down here, I'm going to... I have my foot on the brake and I'm going to put it on the gas. You hear the beeping. It starts to go just a little bit. But once you push your foot on both, it tells you both pedals pressed. It won't let you go anywhere because the brake pedal actually overrides anything. Whether you're an autopilot, the brake pedal overrides autopilot and then it'll it'll bump you out of autopilot or cruise control. It'll do both. In the, in the hierarchy of the pedals, the brake pedal is the top of the food chain. What if you press both pedals? Nothing, you stop. Okay, this one's gonna be a little difficult to, to do here. I have creep on in the car. I like creep. A lot, of pe a lot of Tesla people don't like creep for some reason, but it's great for a new driver. My daughter's learning to drive in this car, so it kinda simulates what a normal car is like, a normal automatic car, where you let off on the pedal and you start to start to move just a little bit. Someone asked me if there was um, roll away. Does it stop after a while? Uh, so I'm gonna test out a couple things with that. I don't know exactly what they're trying to get at. What happens if, first thing we're gonna do is creep, roll away, unbuckle the seatbelt and see what happens. I'm releasing my foot on the pedal and I'm unbuckle. Nothing, because we're in a parking lot, we're going five miles an hour. Nothing's gonna happen, it's just gonna keep rolling. Just like in a parking lot, an automatic car, you're gonna be able to just coast, basically, and creep. But now that I have my seatbelt off, we're gonna see if I open the door, I come to a stop, and then I let it roll. We did this one before. It won't let you creep with the door open, so it won't let you creep with the door open and you get out either. But let's try with the seatbelt on. Put it in. That was a lot of beeps there. I have it in drive. Open the door. I have my seatbelt on. And let's roll. It allows you to move with the seatbelt on, but as soon as you take the seatbelt off, then you can continue to roll, which means you can actually get out of the car and leave the car. And so let's do that. I'm kidding, I'm not doing that. I'm not stupid. What's wrong with you people? Why would I get out of a moving car? What if creep roll away? Really didn't understand the question, but it came up a couple times. Hopefully you can explain if that was your question, but hopefully that explained. Now this next one here, this next what if, is based off of the one that I left the door open and walked away. Walk away with the door open and then use the app to lock the door, not using the key card or anything. The way I'm gonna simulate that is I'm not gonna walk far away. Uh, I do film with my phone, but I grabbed another camera uh, so I can use the phone to lock the door. I'm actually just going to step outside of the car, turn off my Bluetooth connection and settings on my phone, film with the other camera, and then go go into the app, lock the door with the door open, and see what happens, see if it beeps, and just see what happens. We'll, uh, we'll do that. And then I also have another one while I'm out there, too. So what if we did both? Let's just do one first. Let's do the door thing. These little little cheap GoPro thing, it's not as good a camera as my phone, so sorry for the quality in advance. It is supposed to be 4K though. I'm gonna switch cameras now. So you can see my rig here. I've got a I've got a moment lens, a wide angle lens with a moment case attached to a little tripod thing that I hold. So just in case you guys are wondering what I film with, I'm going to swipe up into settings, go to Bluetooth, and turn Bluetooth off. My Bluetooth setting is off to the phone, so it is not connected anymore. The door is the door is wide open here. I'm gonna go into my Tesla app and it pulls up my car here. It shows that everything's on, but you can see the phone is not connected. Enable Bluetooth to use the phone as a key. So it is not connected right now. I'm going to go into controls and lock the door. Fail to lock the door. One or more doors are open. So you can't it didn't give me an audible note. It didn't beep the horn at all. It didn't do anything like that. It wouldn't allow me to, to lock it. Let me, let me do that again for you so you can see. 
we're going to hit lock. Hopefully you can see this. this is the sun out here. But you can see it failed. It won't allow the door to lock. Now let's try with the key card. The door is open. And you heard it beep because the door is open. See, you're right here. My Bluetooth is still off on the phone. I did not turn it back on yet. It beeps three times to let you know that one of the doors is open still. So it's kind of weird in that way that uh, you're walking away from it. Say it doesn't lock, it doesn't close all the way like that. My Bluetooth is off on the phone. So it should lock. It should try to lock right now. But the door is open, so it's not allowing it. I have the key card. We're going to try to go over there and lock it again. And again, it doesn't lock. So it's still unlocked. You close the door. The Bluetooth connection is not there still. It should be locking up right away. Now it locked. So the door has to be closed. And I think they're going to fix this where uh, there's going to be a proximity sensor or you're going to get some notification in the app because I never got anything. My watch didn't vibrate. I didn't feel the phone or anything. I think there will that will change a little bit. But the other question was, the door's open. The car is not locking itself. Can someone get in and steal it? So there's no, still no Bluetooth connection to my phone. I have the key card here. I'm going to put this stuff down. I'm going to get in the car and see if I can move the car. We're still far enough away. We're, we're far enough away where actually the, the phone should work actually, but everything is off. So we're going to see if it'll work. And I got the other camera here. So what I'm going to do is actually put my foot on the brake and see what happens. Uh, we can drive. That's not good. That's not supposed to happen. Maybe, maybe my Bluetooth isn't off on that phone. Let's go double check that. Bluetooth is off on the phone. I'm not sure if you can see that at all, but Bluetooth is off on the phone. That should not happen. That's not supposed to happen where the car can move. I just powered off my phone completely. Let's wait a little bit for the phone to completely shut down. So there's no signal whatsoever because my phone is off completely. The key card is still on the ground. Let's go over to the car and see if we can get in it and move it. This is a little confusing. So now it's wanting me the key card because the Bluetooth connection's missing from my phone and it was off completely, which is kind of weird because I did turn off Bluetooth. Uh, maybe there's still a proximity sensor in the phone to the car because it's not that far away. So probably if we put the phone way down there, it's not going to work. So let's try that. I've got my phone, that's what I'm recording on. I got that powered back up, turned on Bluetooth again. As you can see, I'm in the car because it's hot outside, it's 91 degrees. What I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna take the, I'm gonna take you and put you way over there in the cul-de-sac area, the turnaround. I'm gonna put you way over there. That's more than 30 feet away, but you only need 15 really. So I'm gonna put you way over there. I'm gonna walk back to the car with the other camera, see if it allows me to hook up. Because over here, we were only like 12 feet away. The phone was only 12 feet away from the car and allowed the car to move. So we're still in that range of the phone, even though the Bluetooth was off, there's still, there still must be a Wi-Fi signal or some type of signal that is attaching that, a, a perimeter distance uh, to the phone. So take you and throw you way over there. Well, not throw you, because this phone's expensive. But I'll put you way over there by the garbage cans, and um, we're going to see if this car can work. Now that we're back in the car, phone's way out on there. We're going to put it, my foot on the brake, put it in drive, and it wants the key card. So we must have been too close before. It wanted the, it wanted the phone. So one of the questions that keeps popping up is, what if, I'm, what if I get out of my car, I walk, I'm walking away, but I'm only 12 feet away, 10, 15 feet away, and someone jumps in the car, can they drive away? Well, yes, they can. If, if, if you're still close enough and you don't realize that, they're in the, that they got in the car, yes, they can drive away with the car. It is gonna be a one-way trip because once they get out of the car, once they get far enough away from the signal of the phone uh, and they get their butt out of the seat, then the car can't be moved again unless you have the key card or you have the phone that has the connection there. So that was a lot of what ifs and a kind of a rant on that uh, just because I came across something that I didn't know. Usually I know the answer to these things before I do them. But what if I didn't? That's what happens if I don't know. So that actually answers one of the other questions that I had on the list here. I uh, didn't realize I was gonna answer that at the same time of doing that. Uh, what is, 
what if your your phone dies? What if you forget your phone or what if the phone dies? Same thing uh, right there. So what if you forget your phone in your book bag or you forget your book bag and your phone's in your car, in the book bag, in the garage? If it's close enough, you're still gonna be able to get in the car and go, and, but then you're gonna be stranded there when you get to wherever you're going. Uh, if your phone dies, once you get to your destination, uh, you wanna continue on, after you get out of the seat, you're gonna to need to use a key card or someone else's phone, log into their Tesla app with your login credentials, then you can actually use that phone to actually start the car, but not actually use the phone as a phone key because then you have to have permissions for that. Maybe I should do a whole video on that. That seems like a lot. That's a big what if, but that just busted out like four questions. All right, what if someone left this in the charging door or the charging port uh, when you left a public charging station, can you drive away? What if you just pull off the, what is this, J1772-5789 plug? You know, this thing came out and stayed in the charging port. Can you drive with this? Does the screen tell you that this is still there? What goes on? Let's open the charging port, jam this in there, see if we can drive away. Put that in place. Come back to the car. You can see it's still there. Close the door. Put it in reverse and you can drive away. Look at that. Just to show you it's still there. Need to open the charging door. Oh, actually it just says close. <laughs> so, oh, it opened up. So let's see if we can just pull it out. No, we can't just pull it out. It's kind of locked into place. So there's a little trick. Inside the trunk here, this little area up here, there's a little vent. You can pull this little tab and it actually releases this. And it beeped and told me something up there on the screen, I'm sure. Yep, let's go see what it said. Charging disabled, unable to charge. Disable charging, never use charging port, lever to insert cable. That doesn't go away. We'll close the charging port door. Let's see if that goes away. Let's see if it see if it closed. Looks like it closed. We're gonna see if that warning goes away. Shouldn't use that bit pull tab though. Didn't know that. So that's interesting. Um, the thing is still on the screen there. The warnings are still on the screen. It didn't like me using that pull tab to release it, although that's what that's for. We have one more test to do on the highway. We're gonna do something in autopilot to test another what if. What if it stays? What do I do? Do I gotta call service? We'll find out together. What if I broke it? What if I destroy the car? What if it doesn't drive anymore? Oh wait, I'm driving it. What if it can't charge anymore? What if I only have 221 miles to drive this thing and then it's dead? That's some scary what ifs. This next what if is, what if you're driving and you go to change lanes? What if you go to change lanes on autopilot, but then you adjust the speed up while you're halfway through? We're going to, I'm gonna lower my speed to, to the speed limit. Autopilot, change lanes, turn signal. And as I'm doing that, I'm going to adjust my speed and nothing happened. I'm gonna slow way down to do that again. I'm going to change lanes and adjust the speed right in the middle and nothing happened. It actually changed lanes, no problem. Adjusting the speed does not affect the changing of the lanes. So what if you change lanes and you change the speed? Exactly what would normally happen. You speed up on this update anyway, the latest update. What if, I just thought of this one, what if you're an autopilot sitting behind a car zero miles an hour, stopped at a light, does the door handle work now? Since you're stopped in autopilot, no foot on the brake, no nothing, does it work? And yes, it does. And it, goes, and it goes crazy. Did you hear that and did you see that? That was insane. I feel like I'm destroying the car today. I got lights going off on the dash, uh, red hands up everywhere. The car hates me today. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Bob. I'll, I'll treat you better. Maybe I'll wash you tomorrow for doing this today. All right, I've parked the car in the garage. You can see that is still there. All the warnings are still there. Little exclamation point up here as well. And this pulses. You can actually bring this over and it'll scroll through those three things that were over there. 
or you can just get it out of your way. Let's plug the car in. And well, that still works, and that's red. That's not a good sign. That's not a good sign at all. It might not charge. We are going to cycle the charging door because that has gone away now. That's closed. I'm going to open port. Now that is white, I'm going to plug it in. And woohoo! It worked! Thank God it worked. My next step was going to be reset the computer, reset the screen and everything, and see if that would work. It was just the charging door that was actually having the issue with it not reading the door was working. So once I cycled that, we've got a green light. So that might've had something to do with the charging door more so than the plug going in. I did pull that string and it told me not to pull that, but now the warnings are off the screen all as well. Although Bob did yell at me before I made the car explode. So we're gonna have to treat Bob a little nicer tomorrow and maybe give him a wash or something like that because he's a little filthy. But anyway, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Check out the links down below to save some money. Abstract Ocean. Excuse you, I'm talking. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.